If you've been watching us for a while, you would not be surprised to know that some of our best recipes come from a restaurant influence. I'm gonna tell you why. Because this one here is a foodie, and this one here just likes to go out whenever she can. And so part of the excitement is going to a restaurant and having the food and having all these great ideas. For her, it is like a creative, like, flood that happens after she eats great food. And like, sometimes she will text me and tell me about it. Other times, like think about, there's a recipe coming up today that we had together in Canmore on a girl's trip and we still talk about it. We were talking about the waitress earlier. There is something special about restaurant food, obviously, but did you know that it can also be freezer meal food? We have taken some of our best restaurant experiences and transformed them into freezer meals and we're so excited to share these with you today. Some of these you will recognize and some of them will be new to you. I do love food. <laughs> it is not a secret. I love eating. <laughs> But there's just something about getting to go out mm -hmm. and you can get we dressed even, up. We even dressed up for you today. I'm <laughs> wearing my Barbie inspired dress because I saw the Barbie movie this week. <laughs> and I have not seen the Barbie movie I yet. I think you should see that. I said in the beginning, you're like, you should come to Barbie with me. And you're like, I don't know. But I think she should come to Barbie with me. Say in the comments if Charlotte should come to Barbie with me. <laughs> and if, the, if it's overwhelmingly yes, Oh, come to Barbie with me. To come see the Barbie you movie. will like it. I you probably will. Would. You will like it. Yes. But yes, you get to get dressed up. You go out. You're there with people, so you have like that relationship thing happening, and you don't have to do dishes. Yeah. <laughs> That's also a major theme. If you've been watching us for a while, uh, I'm Christy, and this is Sharla, and we are Freezer Meals 101, and we have some really great recipes for you today. Okay, this first recipe is because way back in the day, we are talking like 20 years ago, <laughs> Earl's used to have this Thai chicken noodle salad and it was amazing. They don't have it anymore. They haven't forever and ever, probably for at least a decade. <laughs> they have not had this on their menu but I still remember it, I still love it, and so of course I found a way to transform it into a freezer meal or to transform part of it because you can't freeze lettuce, um, but on the day of you can just add your fresh lettuce and some of those other things and just make this, this fresh salad summer experience. Really, it's good in the winter too. This is amazing. So, so into your large freezer bag, you are going to add some boneless, skinless chicken breasts and a little bit of sesame oil. And then you're just gonna like massage the chicken through the bag so that you coat them with that sesame oil. Then in a bowl, you're going to mix together some minced garlic. We just use garlic from a jar because it's a lot faster and easier. And then some sambal olic, that is a ground fresh chili sauce for those who are not familiar. Half a cup of soy sauce, about a quarter cup of melted honey, some lime juice, and you're just gonna mix all of that together. And then you're going to pour half of that sauce into the bag with the chicken. You're gonna squish that to combine it, remove the excess air, seal it, and then you're going to take the other half of the sauce and pour it into a medium size freezer bag. That's a quart size freezer bag. You're going to remove the excess air on this bag as well because... Air is the enemy. <laughs> it's true. When you're freezer cooking, air is what causes your freezer burn and we don't want that. So you're going to staple both bags together above the seal and get those in the freezer. On the day that you go to make this, you just thaw your chicken and you're going to spray a baking dish with some cooking spray and you're gonna get rid of the marinade that's in the bag with the chicken and bake the chicken. Or you can grill this on the barbecue. Either way, you wanna cook it until your internal temperature reaches 165 degrees and then you're gonna slice your chicken to put on top of the salad. Now, while your chicken was cooking, you're gonna get everything else ready. You're going to cook some steam fried egg noodles, 
Those do not need to be cooked for long. So you're just gonna get them sort of in the water boiling and then drain them and rinse them under cold water. And then in bowls, you're going to put some romaine lettuce, sliced red onion, some fresh mint, fresh basil, some of the steam fried noodles that are cooked, and then you're gonna layer that sliced chicken on top, some fresh cilantro, and if you want to, you can add some crushed peanuts at this stage. Then you're gonna drizzle those salad bowls with the sauce that you have in that medium-sized freezer bag and enjoy because this is so good. <laughs> This next recipe is the one I referenced earlier in the video about our Canmore girls trip. And the funny thing was, I think it was even a Thanksgiving weekend. I think it was. We, we left our families. We left our families. <laughs> now listen, weekend. we're Canadian, so uh, Thanksgiving is in October. It's just a long weekend. It's nothing. It's just a... We have a it's nice just dinner. a staff holiday and it's a nice dinner. Um, and so we went and enjoyed our time in Canmore. Canmore is a beautiful mountain town in the Rocky Mountains of Alberta. It is near Banff, which is a little bit more uh, well known. So if you know about Banff, then you kind of have an idea of what Canmore is. Canmore does have, it is pretty known for its restaurants and it has better restaurants than Banff does. It does. And so we went to this place called Tapas. This was years ago. Is Tapas still there? I haven't been. Tapas is still there, but they have a new chef and an entirely new menu. So this is not something that you would be able to get now. So we went to Tapas and if you're not familiar with Tapas, the idea is it's little bites. It's a Spanish thing. They do it in Span Spain and Portugal, where in the evenings after work, you would go around different restaurants or sometimes at the same restaurant and they would have all these little like an appetizer and I love appetizers. appetizers and so it's all these little bites so one of the things that we ordered I don't know what it was called at the no. restaurant but we call it fire and ice shrimp and so we had to find out what it was our waitress was awesome she told us basically how to make it so this is how you make it in a large freezer bag, you are going to add in two pounds of shrimp. We prefer with no tail, but tail on is okay in this case because it is going to add more flavor when you cook it, but it's okay because it's appetizer-y to kind of pick it up and eat it and take the tail off. It's a little messy though, and you'll see why. We're gonna also add into the bag a quarter cup of white wine, some Thai sweet chili sauce, and some whipping cream. Mix those together in the bag, seal it up after removing that excess air because air is the enemy and then we're going to freeze it just like that on the day of cooking you're going to thaw it and just heat it over medium high heat you're going to get that sauce nice and bubbly and those shrimp will cook in six or seven minutes and then eat them and it is delicious and delightful and it is so simple we're talking five ingredients here four ingredients it is so good and since that weekend that we had in Canmore, um, we have made this multiple times, especially when we're having gatherings and having people over and I haven't really met anyone that doesn't love it. We get asked for the recipe all the time. And it's really easy because really it's for ingredients. Oh, you might want some salt and pepper in there. You could, we've you never could. added it, yeah. but if you don't want to open a full bottle of wine just to make one recipe. Did you know that leftover wine freezes? Mm -hmm. I've got a video right there. And it's just a short little quick video showing you how you can freeze wine and then you can use it in, for your white wine, you can use it in sauces, with seafood. We've got a really good pesto minestrone soup that you can use wine mm -hmm. in. For your red wine, you can use it in like chilies or pasta sauces, anything where you wanna like really deepen the flavor. So just an idea for you for that leftover wine. Oh, I do have to say one more thing about our Kenmore Girls trip. Okay, we had so much fun. We watched movies, we talked a ton. We went around the town, we went to dinner, we went, we went to, to breakfast. We went to that really great bakery. 
Yes, we did. And we got some like charcuterie things and made them in the room. Mm -hmm. And we just had like a really, really relaxing time. Oh, and we watched videos about <laughs> how to take care of your kids. And childhood brain trauma. <laughs> she had just been to a really, really great course in the States with her husband. <laughs> And she brought, we were watching these videos, and so now I know lots about childhood brain trauma and attachment theories. It's true. Not exactly light, light video watching, but... But I'll tell you, there are only certain friends in your life that you could go on a trip and do that with, and I'm glad that we have that kind of friendship. And I'm being quite serious, because me knowing those things has helped, has helped me in so many ways... Yeah. in interacting with your family and accepting your family and not judging your family because I saw, I saw it. I learned totally. it. It you was good. It. And even though your kids don't have childhood trauma, the parenting things in there are like really good. It was really good it. information. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so while we were relaxing and filling our brains with not as relaxing information. My husband was back at home with our <gasps> with right. our kids and he he did like a very impressive weekend because first he made Thanksgiving dinner. He's a man that hardly at that time cooked, but he made Thanksgiving dinner and sent his pictures of it. He also painted a few rooms in our house with the kids like and he bought furniture. He got rid of my couches that I loved. They were very old and falling apart. And I, like, it's fair. And Charlotte doesn't like change. No. And she drove the same van <laughs> for 20 years. Only 18. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and these couches, now, in hindsight. My husband is colorblind. And he wasn't wrong though. He wasn't wrong to do it because the only way he could do it was while you were out of the house. Okay, that's true. It was true. an asking for um, forgiveness situation, not an asking for permission. It had to be done. That part is true, but, but he should mad. never <laughs> have chosen the couches himself. This is true. Because he painted the walls like kind of a mint green and they're fine like there's still that color and it's fine and it's a very very light so it's very like almost subtle. like a white with a subtle green hue it's lovely but he bought an orange couch and i mean burnt orange and 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 so some people call it orange like it is <laughs> it was orange and the other couches the couch and love seat were like that beautiful teal, like no, those are new. Those are what we what we bought after I made him return the orange couches. Oh, that I forgot. Yes. So that part I forgot. <laughs> oh, funny. So we have one orange couch left that he really wanted to keep. He really loved this couch, so it kind of has moved from room to room. It's never been in that room, <laughs> but but I went shopping with him because my couches were gone. Like to the dump gone, which is fair. They deserve to go there. They were very old and they were not even new when we got them. They were like new to us. But so when I think about that Kenmore weekend, I think about tapas. I think about our fun times and like very relaxing. And we had a great drive. Yes. And we had really good Yorkshire pudding on the way. Oh, in Red Deer. Red Deer. Mm -hmm. Yes. There was a pub that we went to. Yes. I forget the name of it, but she doesn't eat beef. So I had the beef <laughs> and she had my Yorkshire pudding. So good. <laughs> <laughs> so I think of that. And then I also think about these couches and my husband managing to paint and make Thanksgiving dinner while I was gone. My husband kept the children alive. Nobody had scurvy. And when we got home, I then wanted Thanksgiving dinner because we didn't really have it. No. And so I went home and made a chicken and we had our own Thanksgiving dinner and it was really, really good. I just, I just kind of threw it together. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, what fun we have. <laughs> and all that fire, fire and ice shrimp. So this next recipe was inspired by another sort of adventure uh, travel experience with a restaurant. And that was that my husband and I drove um, 
we were supposed to do just a one day trip, just really quick, like there and back. Now I say really quick there and back and it's seven hours <laughs> there and seven Where? hours back to Panorama. Oh. And we were just supposed to come back the same day because we have kids. And <laughs> so, you know, my mom was gonna come over after they got home from school and watch them. But what ended up happening is there was this massive blizzard and they closed the roads. <laughs> and so we couldn't come home. So we were stuck. We did not have like toothbrushes. We went to a dollar store there. Well, I think it's called Red Apple. It's sort of like a dollar store and got ourselves like toothbrushes and maybe deodorant or whatever. And we had to get a hotel room in uh, a town called Radium, which is in the mountains and they're famous for their hot springs there. And it was like, it was crazy. But we went for dinner in Invermere and in the midst of this like trying to figure out like okay who's gonna stay with our kids tonight and how are we gonna coordinate and who's gonna figure out how the kids get on the bus and all the things uh which we did figure out <laughs> but we went to this restaurant and it was our first time going to this restaurant it's called Birchwood in Invermere it's lovely and quaint and just you know very sweet and they had a special that night, which was a pasta puttanesca. And my husband and I had made pasta puttanesca for an at-home date night, not that long before that. So we were like, oh, it's meant to be, <laughs> it's like our dish. You just turn it into a date. We turned it into like a day and a half date. That's actually pretty nice. It was, it That's was, a good adventure. Yeah. So this next recipe that we have invented is inspired from the Birchwood in Invermere, and it is our one pot pasta puttanesca. I'm sure theirs was not one pot. It was, you know, fancier than this. <laughs> but in a large freezer bag, you're going to add some olive oil, some anchovy paste, some minced garlic, uh, can of the San Marzano tomatoes. So those are Roma tomatoes and you want to break those up. So you can either do it with a masher or with your fingers. And we're going to add some Kalamata olives that are pitted and halved, some capers because then you get that really good saltiness, a little bit of red pepper flakes. You can of course add more if you like things spicy, some chicken broth, salt and pepper and you're going to get all of the air out of your bag, seal it and freeze it. On the day you go to cook this, this could not be easier because you're just going to thaw your bag and then you're going to heat this up in a really large skillet or a stovetop pot and you're going to add a pound of spaghetti noodles right in. Like you just take your dry spaghetti noodles and you throw them right in the pot. If you want to make stirring easier, you can break them in half. I've done it both ways, so it, either way doesn't matter. You're gonna simmer that for about 10 minutes. You're gonna stir it here and there, and once your spaghetti is not only cooked through, but has absorbed some of those flavors from that delicious sauce, you're gonna take it off and sprinkle it with chopped fresh basil and some shredded Parmesan cheese. It is so good. So good. Like we have another puttanesca, we have the chicken. I think this is better. It is, it's so good. And this is a recipe where you're not gonna miss the meat. I mean, you do have anchovy paste, so it's not technically vegetarian, but it's meatless and you're not gonna care. If you're a meat person, this is flavorful enough that you won't even think about missing the meat. It is really, really good. You can find the recipe for this in the club and the link for that is in the description below. This next recipe is something that you can find in slightly upscale restaurants across North America. It is at your Earl's, it's at your Cactus Club, it's at your Joey's. This is Thai chili chicken lettuce wraps and it's sort of kind of like the Thai chicken noodle salad 
in that you're gonna add your lettuce and your steam fried noodles on the day of cooking, but otherwise it is a completely different recipe, so stick with me. In our large bag, we are going to add cooked ground chicken, some minced garlic, again from that jar, some diced onion, some roasted cashews, some matchstick carrots. Now you can prep these yourselves, or if you didn't know, you can buy these in your deli area or in your produce area already prepped. You can buy matchstick carrots in a bag. Some diced red pepper, some fish sauce, some soy sauce, and that's it. We're going to squish these things around and get them nice and coated, remove that excess air, and seal. In a medium-sized freezer bag, we are going to add some sauce. We're going to add some more of that sweet Thai chili sauce, some lime juice, and some sesame seeds. Seal that up and staple it to your big bag. On the day of cooking, you're going to allow it to thaw and the large bag you're just gonna reheat on your stove. It's only gonna take a few minutes to heat through because your chicken is already cooked, right? So you really just need to soften your onion, your red pepper just a little bit because you still wanna hold on to that crunch. Spoon that onto a lettuce leaf and then top it with these crunchy steam fried noodles and then drizzle it with the sauce. And then if you have some cilantro, you can sprinkle that on there too. And we've eaten this as a main, we've eaten this as a rep, an appetizer. We've had this on game night. Mm -hmm. We played Ticket to Ride, and you guys had like the Amsterdam, or the uh, the Dutch version, the Netherlands. Oh yes. And yeah, we played that one. at our house. And we had these that night. Yeah. And it, they're just good, they're, it's just good. And aside from the cashews, it's actually really frugal. It's yeah. really funny when you start to look at restaurant meals, because, you know, we look at restaurant meals, and you're like, hmm, they got a pretty good margin on this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this yeah. is super frugal and very, very delicious. Definite, definitely, probably, definitely, probably, probably one of our favorite restaurant-inspired meals. Yes, for sure. For sure. I was telling Christy this morning that my husband and I actually went to a restaurant last night, and it was 100% because I was telling him that I was having trouble getting inspired to create new recipes because we hadn't been to fancy restaurants in a while. And so he's so nice. <laughs> he took me to a restaurant, he researched online and he found one that he thought had food that was a little bit unusual. And so we did find some things <laughs> actually that I am going to try to freezer mealize. And so we're not, we don't have them in today's video because I haven't tested them. I haven't figured out, you know, how to do these things yet, but there was, it was really good. And one of the things that we had that I know I can't freezer mealize, so I'm just gonna tell you guys about it. But, and I told Christy already this morning, but it was kind of like a poutine, sort of, ish, in that it was over french fries, but it was, French fries and they were really well done. Like they, they were a good fry um, with brie instead of mm -hmm. cheese curds. And then instead of the gravy, it was a blueberry honey with blueberries. And it mm. was heavenly. It was so good. And I, I said to her, I'm like, I would eat that on a cracker. Why wouldn't you eat it on a fry? That's wow. great. It was so good. And there were a lot of honey inspired recipes or honey like things like there was a sriracha honey dish and some lots of different kinds of uses of honey they had pizzas that had honey in different ways on them and so the interesting thing about that is that we actually have honey in our yard and we got a new like a new infusion of honey yesterday and so it was just that day that we had gotten this big container of fresh like really doesn't get any fresher than from your yard honey and so I had honey on the brain we went to this restaurant where there's like honey and everything not really in everything but like throughout the menu lots of honey things and so in the coming weeks I think you know watch watch our channel and I think you'll see some some honey things and so I walked in today and I'm like, oh, you got your honey. And it's a big ice cream pail full of honey. And this is like honey, right? Like this is fresh, it's raw, it is wonderful honey. And so 
that also really helps with the inspiration yes. to have this huge pail of honey just sitting there waiting. And that means I can experiment all I want because I've got so much honey to use. So I already am planning this hot honey chicken. Like I got so many things <laughs> in my brain that you're gonna get to see in the next little bit. But first so, we have one more recipe. Yes, we do. So, so my husband and I went to visit our oldest son in Kamloops, BC, which is where he's living right now. And while we were there, we went for breakfast with him and his fiance. By the time you see this video, she will almost be his wife, actually. It's coming very, very soon. Well, she's almost his wife now. She is. <laughs> They're engaged. <laughs> yes, but the wedding date is very very soon mm -hmm. so um and on the menu there was this moroccan chickpea stew but it was a breakfast menu so i was a little bit you know confused so i asked the server about it and she was like if you're gonna have any dish on our menu have that one it's the best thing here and yes it is a breakfast dish because you can get it with poached eggs on top and it it came with like bread on the side, like a really rustic mm. sort of made in-house bread. And it was so good. Anyway, I had to recreate this dish as soon as I got home. I made Christy try it. Yes, she did. <laughs> and She's like, you're not going to believe this. This was on their breakfast menu. And we, we don't eat it for breakfast. We've made it many times um, and we, we always have it as a dinner, but it I would try it for breakfast. I would be swayed to try it if I was in a restaurant and I would put the poached eggs on it. That'd be great. Yeah, my husband had it with the poached eggs. I had it without, but we both super enjoyed this. And so this is our Moroccan chickpea stew. Into your large freezer bag, you're going to put a chopped onion, some minced garlic, some canned chickpeas that are drained and rinsed, one or two sweet potatoes that are peeled in cubes. Now I say one or two because sweet potatoes vary greatly in size. So you just want to use your best judgment. If it's small sweet potatoes, use two. If it's large, use one. Then some diced tomatoes, some Kalamata olives that are pitted, a cup of vegetable broth, some brown sugar, cumin, curry powder, paprika, cinnamon, turmeric and a little bit of cayenne or more if you like things spicy salt and pepper there's so many seasonings in here which really add to the flavor you're going to remove your excess air seal it and freeze it on the day you go to make this you can saw it you can heat it up in on your stove top or you can heat it in your slow cooker it's just so good and because this one also uses the Kalamata olives if you made it at the same time that you were making the pasta puttanesca, you could, it just makes more sense to make meals with like ingredients because then you're buying one jar and being able to use it over multiple recipes. Right, same so, thing for the Thai sweet chili sauce because we're using it in the chicken lettuce wraps as well as the fire and ice shrimp. Mm -hmm. The odd one out is that other Thai noodle salad, but the steam fried noodles are in both that and the yes. chips. Yes. And you could freeze those. You could put those in a separate bag and freeze them or just leave it in your pantry. It's a pantry item. It would stay good for a long time. And those are, it's so different because on the one you're having them raw for the crunch mm -hmm. and on the other one you're having them cooked so they're soft. So it's like, you're not going to feel like you're having a redundant. Heat, yes. Right. No. Yeah. So these are our restaurant inspired freezer meals. I'm going to continue to visit restaurants <laughs> so that I can bring you the best tasting freezer meals possible. And it works. Um, if you are a member of the club, you know that the stuff that tastes good gets put in the club. Now, there are some family friendly ones in there too that maybe aren't the um, gourmet. The, they are not gourmet, but they are family friendly and you want those in your freezer just as much as you want the elevated ones. Because really people think of freezer meals and they think chili, lasagna, and casseroles. No, they can be so much more. They can taste good. And this is our life. We eat stuff like this every single day. Cause you're like, oh, who's gonna make Moroccan chickpea stew for supper? We are. We are because it's in our freezer. We can pull it out. 
bam, and it is delicious. It's fabulous every time. So thank you for joining us so we could get all dressed up and um, go to the restaurant with you. We're gonna put a video right there because if you're like me and you like food that is a little more foodie, you might enjoy some of our appetizers. So we're gonna put an appetizer video there so you can make those ahead and have them in your freezer ready to impress your guests. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy cooking.